franktalks.com Relationships, sex, passion with Dr. Lori Batito. Hear the show live weeknights 10 to 11 on CJAD 800. Tonight, our regular monthly feature that we call Dating Dilemmas. I am joined by Frank Kermit. He's a dating coach of franktalks.com. He's the best-selling author of several books on the subject of uh, relationships, men and women. He's a relationship columnist for the West End Times. And uh, actually, he'll be a keynote speaker at the Solo Lifestyle Conference, something new taking place November 23rd to the 25th at Place Bonaventure. Actually, the, I think the only Anglo speaking at that conference. Maybe by next year, we'll have a few more. Frank, welcome uh, to the program. Thank you, Dr. Laurie. It's great to be here. Uh, so, we're going to talk about um, people who, I guess, have given up on dating. I mean, there's either given up on dating and those who are just happy being single because the two may not uh, go together. Uh, I know plenty of people who've given up on dating but are not necessarily happy they're single. And then I know other people who've said, you know what, I don't really want to date. I'm okay alone and this is fine for them. So we're really looking at two different things, right? Exactly. There's two types of camps. One of them is people who are single and happy to be single. They enjoy their life. They don't complain that they're alone. They make the most of it. And then there's those people who would rather be in a relationship but struggle so much that they just reside themselves to being alone. So they just kind of give up on the whole notion of trying to find a relationship or exactly. to find a mate. Um, so let's ask our audience this. Uh, have you or maybe someone you know given up on dating or relationships altogether? Do you prefer to be alone? Um, have you maybe never had a relationship and this is how you have wanted it? Is there such a thing as being happily single. And this is something we are talking about tonight. So we want to hear from you. 514-790-0991. Star Talk, star 8255 on your cell. You can also text us at 514-800. Happily single or not? And that's the big question. So I'll ask you first, Frank. Can someone be single and be happy to be single? Absolutely the same way that somebody could be in a relationship and still be miserable. <laughs> you know, I think one of the things that people uh, seem to forget sometimes is that if you are an unhappy person, if you are generally a negative person, having somebody else in your life really isn't going to change that. You're not going to necessarily find all of your happiness in another person. Right. And And I do hear some people say, you know, well, when I get into a relationship, when I get married, when I have, you know, as if their entire lives will change when, or they're, that's when they'll be happy. Exactly. And the fact is, that's not the way it works. If you are a miserable person before you get married or <laughs> before you end up in a relationship, you may get distracted for a period of time, that wonderful honeymoon phase at the right. beginning of a relationship when you're dating somebody new, and you may get a thrill out of that. You know, there's some escapism involved in that, but eventually things settle down, you get into a new routine with that new person, and if you're just not happy with your life, a person sharing that life isn't necessarily going to be the thing that gives a positive spin to everything. Right. And I think the message here is that a person, another human being cannot be your life or your reason for living. And I should say partnership. I mean, they'll think differently about your children, but um, in terms of a partner, you know, uh -huh. so it's that whole notion of, uh, you know, I can only be happy if I'm coupled or if I'm with somebody else and that person will make me happy. Exactly. Nobody can make you happy in that way. You need to have a full life. And it's great if you have somebody to share that life with, having a companion in your life to go along the journey with you. That's a wonderful thing. But if you need somebody to provide you with the journey, ah, you've missed it. the point. Well put, actually, that you need that person to be your journey. That's right. You can't have somebody else be your journey or give you your journey. You have to set decide what your goals are. You have to decide what it is that gives meaning to your life and then find somebody to share that life with. And let me tell you, for the other person who's you make their, your journey, it's a huge 
uh, burden. It's a huge, um, not just, it's a pressure. There's mm-hmm. a certain pressure involved when you know that you're, you're the one responsible for how your partner feels. It's a heck of a responsibility that is quite a turnoff, actually. For people who know to recognize a red flag, that is a red flag. Mm. When the person tells you, you are my everything, you are my life, I am absolutely nothing without you. That sounds wonderful because it, it almost sounds like romantic prose. <laughs> but uh, it's actually a red flag when you're that important to someone because they can't make it on their own at all. And that mm. means that when the chips are down, it's all on you. And that's not what a partnership is about. No, it definitely is not. Um, we want to hear from you. Do you think you can be single and happy? Or do you know people who have been waiting to get in a relationship thinking that's what's going to make them happy? We'd love to hear from you at 514-790-0991. Star Talk, star 8255 on your cell. Or you can text us at 514-800. We'd love to hear your thoughts on that. It is our dating dilemma topic tonight about Uh, being single and happy. Um, And actually, Frank has written an article in this week's West End Times. Is there such a thing as happily single? Of course, you can uh, can read that there. But we'd love to hear some of your thoughts on this topic, people who give up on dating uh, and those who are just as content to be single. You're listening to Passion on CJAD 800. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best-selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at franktalks.com. Coaching available in person, by phone, and by Skype. For singles, couples, and alternative lifestyles, franktalks.com. You're listening to Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on CJAD 800. Dating dilemmas tonight on Passion, and we are talking about being single and happy. Is there such a thing as happily single? What about people who've just given up on dating? And actually, uh, Robert texted in, uh, while I have not found the right person yet, I prefer to be single rather than to stay in a bad relationship. I believe it's better this way. I think he brings up a very, very good point that is it not better to be single than to be in a bad relationship? I think that depends also on how you define a bad relationship. If you're talking about a relationship that is emotionally abusive, something that's destroying your self-esteem, something that's uh, destroying your faith in uh, other people, then yeah, get get out of that relationship. Mm-hmm. However, uh, I've often found sometimes that what people will call a bad relationship can sometimes just be an excuse. They're really unhappy with their lives. They, they're they not the type of people to pursue their dreams and they're going to blame their partner for it. Mm. So we have to really evaluate, are you really in a bad relationship or... Are you just a miserable person on your own? Exactly. Or, because you're right, we, we can blame the other person. He or she is making me miserable. Yeah, and then there's also the question of, would you really be better off? Because sometimes you may be bored in your relationship, uh-huh. but it's not necessarily a bad relationship. But if your partner is really great uh, in terms of being a very good parent to both your children and, and your partner is uh, in all in all respects, you know, a decent person and is there for you and... Are you necessarily going to be better off single? I don't think so. You really have to look at the entire context of the relationship. When you're dealing with something like violence, well, there is no question there. you got to smarten up and say, okay, staying in a violent situation just isn't safe, period. Or a relationship where, like you said, your self-esteem is so destroyed for whatever. It doesn't have to be physical violence, but it could be any number of, you know, controlling partner, jealous, you know, intense jealousy. I mean, there's many, many things that could make a relationship. That's right. Not, you know, make a relationship dysfunctional yeah. um, or unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Um, but we need to be able to pick out, like you say, are you just bored? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, you know, do you, are you just looking for more excitement? Uh, and this is what you're calling a bad relationship or truly it's, you know, is destroying you somehow. 
look, the grass is not always greener on the other side. There are people in a relationship thinking, if I was single, I'd be having a lot more fun. And then they're single and they're thinking, wow, if I had a, if I was in a relationship, I'd be, uh, I'd be feeling a lot more secure. And then having to balance that. Right. Some people think if I'm single, I'll be having a lot more sex. Do I mean? (laughs) Yes, yes, we do. Of course, we do. Of course, we do. Come on. (laughs) Really? Really? <laughs> 514-790-0991. You can also uh, text us at 514-800. would like to hear your thoughts on um, being single. Better to be single than in a bad relationship or somewhere where you feel uh, miserable. Could you make the distinction between being unhappy with yourself and unhappy in the relationship? I think that's a very good point. Maybe a little complex for our conversation here but it's something certainly that we work on um, in therapy because it's that's that's a real issue uh, that has to be dealt with um what about people who um have never been like who who say you know what i've never had a good relationship and they either give up because they've never had a good relationship or like what hap- what do they they usually say That's one of the biggest struggles in this process, because if you don't have a positive frame of reference, it's kind of difficult to stay motivated to keep hoping for it and to keep going for it. Hmm. When I'm dealing with somebody who says, I've never had a really great relationship. I've never had someone that has made me feel completely and totally loved and cared for. So what's the point of, you know, working hard to get into the next relationship if it's going to be the same way? As all the others I've had that were sucky. Exactly, Mm -hmm. because what they lack at that point is they lack hope. They lack the faith that they're actually going to find someone who's going to have a better relationship with them than what they experienced in the past. Makes sense. Uh, Karen joins us on Passion. Hi, Karen. Hi, you guys. Hi. I was just thinking about what you're saying, and I'm thinking about a lot of the couples that I know and couple relationships have changed a lot, you know, gender-wise, and um, some people, you know, live together rather than marry. Mm-hmm. But there's something else I'm noticing, too, that people are not living together, and that seems to work for some people. They're in a committed, exclusive relationship. They're each other's companions, but they don't live together. I noticed that in older couples. Yes, Yeah, where they each have their kids, in fact, and they don't want to necessarily blend. It's too complicated to blend the families, and this way they get to just see each other. They coordinate their uh, their weeks with the kids with the time that you know. So they get one week together, one week off, one week together, and they go to their respective homes and and it seems to work. I know you're right. I do know a lot of couples who have maintained this for years like this. And I think it's good because. You have time to miss the person, and anticipation is quite good for a relationship, don't you think? I do, and I think that often in a marriage that's what's missing, and that's what creates sometimes a little bit of boredom, is that we don't have the anticipation. In other words, you know, when you first date, Mm -hmm. um, you're always looking for, you kind of look forward to seeing the person, and then you... You know that when you're going to see the person, oh, it's going to, you're going to have sex and, you know, whatever. And when you're married, like, there's always a tomorrow. You know, ah, I'm too tired. Let's do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and there's another tomorrow and many tomorrows that can happen, right? Whereas when you're dating, you kind of, oh, we're getting together. Okay, good. Nobody's going to be at your house. Okay, good. And then you kind of automatically, you know, just know you're going to have sex. You know, you talk a lot about, you know, commitment. And some people are commitment in a marriage or they're living together, but they're not really committed. You know, they're cheating on the person. Mm. But there could be a couple that they are very committed and very exclusive, but they're not living together. But they're more committed because they're committed in their heart. Yes. And uh, yes, I think, you know, there are many ways of expressing that commitment. Karen, very well said. I'm glad you brought up that issue. Thanks so much. (laughs) Okay, bye now. Um, Yes, we're uh, talking about being single and happy uh, and people who just give up uh, on dating. Have you given up on dating? Want to hear your thoughts right here on Passion on CJAD 800. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at franktalks.com. Coaching available in person, by phone, and by Skype for singles, couples, 
and alternative lifestyles, franktalks.com. You're listening to Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on CJAD 800. This is the right thing to do. Can Dating dilemmas tonight on Passion uh, with uh, Frank Kermit of franktalks.com. We're talking about being single, being happy and single. It is better than being in a bad relationship, isn't it? 514-790-0991. We have Jen on the line. Hi, Jen. Uh, hi. Hi. I have a few comments about that. Yeah. As far as I'm, I've seen it, I'm uh, far on in my uh, life and my age, and uh, people marry because they wanted something from each other. And it suited them fine. Mm-hmm. Now, you, if you have to treat yourself for your birthday or your piano lessons or accordion or art, you don't need somebody as a, as a barnacle on a ship, you know? That's uh, you true. don't need them every day. That's right. All week long. Mm-hmm. And if you have to treat yourself, you know, you don't need that. And you don't need goals, striving because somebody thinks you should be striving ever, you know, all your life. You got to do it for you yourself. You got to be simple. You know that word. Keep it simple. Right. And you don't need all that extra of everything. Uh, you know. So and it- I had friends. Okay, it's true. I wasn't head over heels with them. When we didn't have idols in my day, <laughs> you got working, and that was it. Early in your life, and uh, and you were happy, and you never had goals because you never thought to have them, and maybe we should have had some as far as earning money or saving. As a but woman. But we never thought of it. It mm-hmm. never occurred to some of us, and even my friends uh, a few years younger. And uh, if I've had to treat myself because nobody would uh, play an instrument for me, then I'm doing it for myself. I don't need someone every single day. Good. Well, I'm glad, to, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to hear it Don't now. Don't you think there's a lot of truth to some of that? I do, Jen. They wanted something from each other to make a child and whatever. Sometimes. You know, to grow, uh, have a family. But that, but that's a permanent uh, connection, and if it, it's fine if it Have works. you ever been married, Jen? No, I haven't. Okay. and well, But I, I'm just saying I haven't met the right person, but if I have to treat myself, I don't need do somebody right. as a barnacle. <laughs> you know, That's a good way of putting. You don't I need like anybody people, latching on to you. I enjoyed them better now because I. Uh, it's true. I was a bit shy and maybe wasn't what people liked. But I'm fine for myself, and I didn't have to make goals. They developed on their Jen, own. Jen, I'm they so glad. Jen, I'm glad you're taking care of yourself, and you always have. Thanks so much for calling so- and appreciate it. Hi, Stephen. Welcome to the show. Hi, Lori. I love listening to you. Thank you. And, and my story is. I'm 57 years old, Mm -hmm. I've never been married, and I have no children. Okay. And today I did an extraordinary thing. I had a date with a girl, which I hadn't done since I was 17 years old. In, in, In 40 years, you haven't dated? Well, I mean, I have a sexual past, and I meet girls, and, you know, we score. But this is the first time in 40 years... I've met a girl that I wanted to have a date with. That you want to have like a relationship with. Well, or just, or just a one date thing. Well, no, I, I've been in, in incredible, beautiful relationships with women in the past. But the extraordinary thing is that I actually made a date. I took her out for lunch at a. I'm confused rest- though. You just said this is your first date. And the first date. person you've ever wanted to date, but you just said you had beautiful relationships. Uh, tell me what you mean. Well, you've had relationships. I mean, relationships usually start with dates, or have you just had sexual experiences with well, women? Well, no, it's the kind of thing where I meet a woman in a, in a circumstance, and we just hit it right off. Okay, and? And it happens that night. Sex, you mean? Well, yeah, sex, and it develops into a love relationship. So you've had relationships. Oh, guaranteed. Okay, so what are you yeah. saying? I- I'm confused. This is the first time in in all these years that you've actually fell in well, love. Th- th- no, no, that I wanted to court somebody and uh, nurture a relationship because she's a real sweetheart. Okay, but, you know. I- In the past, I met a girl, and boom, it happens. We sleep together, and the the, the relationship develops. 
Okay, so this one, you're not, it's not because you've slept together first. You're actually courting her, and it's, right. it's, it's more important for the courting part than just to get the sex out of her. Well, exactly. Okay, I think I got you. And, and it's an extraordinary situation. We had a beautiful lunch in old Montreal and went to the Museum of Fine Arts to see the... That's a nice date. A, 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 a ...exhibit, you know. Beautiful date. And she's such a lovely girl... And it was an extraordinary situation. And, Good. You know, and I have to share that with people that, you know, sometimes it takes time and, you know, sometimes it's love at first sight. But for me, it's an extraordinary situation to meet a, a lovely lady. Because, you see, my problem is that my mother said to me, don't go out with a girl I'm not going to like. Oi. Mm. Oi. This is, this is the kind of girl that my mother would be Mama proud of. pressures. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah. No, that's okay. You think that's okay? That's probably yes. what stopped you from having uh, and pursuing oh, really? relationships for all well, these years. No, 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 nothing has stopped me. I mean, I've had my crazy sexual things and stuff like that. And Yes, you know, but you never it, met the mom, the, 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 the girl to bring home to mama. And somehow... Well, well, no, no, yes, I have. Yes, I have. But? You no, know, but, but this one is the person that... She's so extraordinary that I'm, I'm being patient. And Good. it didn't... And like boom, just like that. Good. All right. Well, but, Stephen, I hope. And somehow it was love at first sight, but it was sublime. <laughs> and we both understand. She's forty-eight. I'm fifty-seven. And we both understand. We've been through the meat grinder before, but you approach it in a very loving, mm. respectful. Amazing what maturity will do for us, huh? Situation. With age, well, yeah. Well, yeah, Stephen. So, uh, I'm just enchanted now to meet this girl, and I'd like to explain to other guys, you know, all it takes is to be a gentleman and be charming and caring and giving mm. and, and, and kind. it'll come back to you. <laughs> yes. That's, Stephen, I appreciate you taking the time to call us tonight. Have a good night. It's groovy, man. <laughs> all right. Bye. Groovy for sure. Uh, 514-790-0991. Star Talk, star 8255 on your cell phone, or you can text us at 514-800. Now, here's a guy who's been alone a long time, or I, from what I'm gathering, I don't know. Is it harder for people that have been alone a long time to find somebody or it to feel like they want to find somebody it's not harder necessarily to find someone once they put themselves out there they're going to uh, have opportunities what is harder is that when you're alone for a long time you get comfortable being alone you get comfortable in your own space you get comfortable in your own routines and although you may crave the companionship when somebody comes into your space and all of, all of a sudden offsets your routine we get pushed out of our comfort zone mm. because it's not familiar. You, you've been doing the same thing day in and day out for years, and now that you have somebody else in your space, your routine has to change on some level, especially if you're going to be moving in together. And even if you're not moving in together, if you're seeing that person a couple of times a week, they are eventually going to invade your space. Uh, a couple of times a week, you might have somebody waking up with you in your bedroom and ready to sit down for breakfast. And these changes to the routine, as happy as you may be that someone is there, you notice, depending on your personality, every crumb that hits the floor, your <laughs> clean, pristine floors, because you're just not used to someone invading your space and having to deal with your particular idiosyncrasies. Right. And they're not really invading. They're just in your space. So, ooh, you know, sometimes that's just hard to handle. Uh, hi, Ken. Welcome to the show. Yes. Uh, hi. My name is Ken. How are you? Good. How are you, Ken? I'm fine. Uh, I happen to uh, be listening to your program, and I find it's a very interesting uh, topic tonight. Mm. Uh, basically, um, I was uh, married for 25 years, and uh, I knew my wife. Uh, we went out uh, three years before we got married, so basically uh, I had been with the uh, same woman for uh, 28 years. And wow. I got divorced and been divorced for nine years. 
and uh, I don't feel the need to uh, to get uh, seriously involved with another woman. I'm content with my lifestyle. Um, I don't think I'd be able to ever love another woman uh, as I did my uh, ex-wife. Interesting. And uh, that's basically my position. So, but you feel like you're you feel fulfilled in your life right now. You don't need a relationship in order to do that. No. Uh, now that doesn't uh, exclude uh, the fact that uh, I have uh, female companions and I mm-hmm. have, have my children that I love dearly. Right. But uh, like the old expression goes, once you've driven the Cadillac, it's hard to go back to a Volkswagen. Mm-hmm. Well, you know. So uh, I. Uh, I'd be curious to know why you split up. Um. Basically, I decided. Uh, uh, to uh, well, I I had worked. Uh, as an employee for about uh, 20 years, and then I decided to uh, open my own business. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that was so that, uh, because I was very uh, uh, optimistic that the uh, business would be successful, Mm -hmm. but I knew that it would involve a lot of work. And uh, I sat down and uh, discussed it with my wife and uh, explained to her that uh, there'd be a lot of hard work and the company probably wouldn't be uh, profitable I, I for think I can five, see. I five think. years, and she accepted it. Uh, but then but... I guess she just got fed up with the fact that I was uh, rarely available. And, yeah. you know, the little things that made us fall in love uh, with each other initially, uh, you know, I wasn't doing them anymore, and mm. um, that was basically it. Uh, it's sad. Yeah. yeah I, I, can, I can see that. I yeah. saw it, I saw it coming. Saw it coming there, Ken. Well, I didn't. You see, I was so sure that uh, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, I I never even gave the uh, the issue of um, my ex wife uh, wanting a divorce. It, that's how snug I was or right. complacent, you know. Right. Well, that's some of the problems that happen, of course. Ken, thanks so much, and I'm sorry that that all no, no, it's happened. Nothing to be sorry about. <laughs> I just wanted to explain my story. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. More of your calls coming up next here on Passion. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best-selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at franktalks.com. Coaching available in person, by phone, and by Skype. For singles, couples, and alternative lifestyles, franktalks.com. You're listening to Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on CJAD 800. Dating Dilemmas tonight on Passion. Uh, Frank Kermit joins me as he does every month for Dating Dilemmas. We're talking about people who are happy and single or people who are just given up on dating and, you know, they're pretty content. Uh, being uh, alone, um, let me know what you think. Five one four seven nine zero zero nine nine one. Hi, Carl. Welcome to the program. Hello. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? Um, good. So I was in a relationship, or sort of, for five years, which was she wasn't the, she wasn't emotionally available, and she was she was involved with somebody else, and then Eesh. but it was a it was an it was an abusive relationship on his part and on her part and, and on my part. So what it was was she would come to me when he would be abusive to her, but she would go back to him and then... So it sounds like the relationship was just on your side. You thought you were no, in a relationship no, well, with her, but she was really in a relationship no, with someone else. No, she was else. in a relationship with somebody else, but she was sending me mixed signals and so on. And, and it took me five years to get out of that. And then I wow. realized... It took me five years to realize that I was... Get, that I was getting that you deserve more that maybe, I deserve Carol? more than mm-hmm. that and now it's I I have a good therapist that's all I can say <laughs> <laughs> and um good and uh so it's and I'm finally ready to actually date somebody who's available now so which, which, which is which is better than dating somebody who isn't that's right and sometimes i'm sure in therapy you're dealing with mm, let me see how come i chose somebody who was unavailable well, 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 we're, we're starting to anyway <laughs> okay good well that's what you need to look at for sure i'm glad i'm, anyway, I'm really so glad I, I just thought i'd share that all right carl thanks so much for calling and sharing right all right bye bye 
you know, I think it takes guts for people to be able to share their lives with us. I really, I have to say, I, I very much respect and appreciate the our callers because, you know, it, it does help other people. Absolutely. It takes a lot of courage to take that first step. And when you start sharing your stories, that's also one of the first necessary steps to healing. Hmm. Because once you start talking about your past heartbreak, once you start talking about maybe some of the bad choices you might have made, you bring it out into the open and you can find that process of healing yourself, finding a sense of self-forgiveness. And in that process, learn what to do next. Yeah, very important. I think Carl is definitely on the right track right now. 100%. Very proud of that guy. Good, good, good. Uh, here's a, a message we got. Hi, Dr. Lori. Do you think, and I'm throwing it to you, do you think, Frank, um, it's wrong for a 50-year-old man to date a 22-year-old woman? Is it wrong in the sense of, is yeah. it illegal? It's is not it... illegal. Well, look, is the 50-year-old man a consenting adult? Is the 20, 22, is it? Yeah, 22. Is it a, is the 22-year-old woman a consenting adult? Does everybody have their faculties? Then it's up to them. Yeah, it's, and, not, it's not a right or wrong. It may Some of us may react with an ick factor, like, ooh, what's a 22-year-old want with a 50-year-old? Or what does a 50-year-old really have in common with a 22-year-old? But that's just a judgment. That's not really a Honestly, right or wrong. <laughs> it's nobody's business. When I look at a situation like that, the first question I have is, is there any violence in that situation? Are they being violent to one another? Are they being violent to anybody else? And if the answer is no, it's nobody's business. If they're happy doing that, power to them. If it was a 50-year-old woman dating a 22-year-old man, same thing. Mm. Power to them. If they're happy, it's and nobody's business. And they're both business. consenting. Once again, they're both, you know, we're talking about consenting adults here of course if the relationship started when she was 17 that's I'd a say, different story i'd say uh mm -mm, although that's you know the age isn't so far off but whatever whatever it those are judgments i don't think it's a question of necessarily right or wrong but what people are comfortable with uh we're talking uh, about dating of course as we do uh for every month here on dating dilemmas and we're talking about happily being single happily uh and giving up on dating, some people have. We'll uh, get to some of your text messages at 514-800 coming up, but you can call. We still have a bit of time. 514-790-0991. You're listening to Passion on CJD 800. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best-selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at Frank Talks. Com. Coaching available in person, by phone, and by Skype. For singles, couples, and alternative lifestyles, franktalks.com. You're listening to Passion with Dr. Lori Batito on CJAD 800. Tonight it's uh, Dating Dilemmas. Frank Kermit is here. We always have such a nice time. Uh, Frank uh, of uh, Frank Kermit, by the way, conducts weekly relationship workshops every Saturday evening. It's been going on for months now mm -hmm. um, from 7 to 9 p.m. It's only $5 a person. It's a different topic every week. It's a great place to actually meet people as well, from what I'm hearing. <laughs> uh, anyhow. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, been married two times. And a, and a common law, one common law. I'm 67 and happily single, uh, still working, and date when the mood strikes from Mike. Okay, well, that's, that's okay. You know, something that uh, we haven't really touched upon yet is that we live in a time right now where we don't need another human being to survive. We can all learn to be self-sufficient. We can all learn to be independent individuals. So we don't really need somebody else necessarily there to help us survive. But people still need people. Mm. We still have we a desire to We need connection. Exactly. Right. We still need that connection. We still need to form bonds with other people. So it's no longer a question of, do I need somebody else to help me survive? No, you can get educated. You can support yourself. You can find ways. Yeah, and that's men and women. And that's been a big change. You know, um, uh, who brought it up? Jan brought it up. The, yeah. elder, the older lady. That now, you know, she wants something for herself, does it for herself. Exactly. It brought up in a time when there were 
you got married, you had you had to have a partner because of specific goals. You needed exactly. so- you needed somebody to support you. You needed somebody uh, to have children with. Blah blah blah. Right, and we live in a time now where people don't really need people. But people still need people. We still need to well, we do that sense people, of connection. And I think we want to share. And But not everybody to, to, to every degree. Like I think exactly. there are really degrees of this because you have some people who don't need many people and, mm-hmm. and some people who are not so good with the connection and would rather be on their own. Exactly. Mm. One of the worst punishments that we can still offer prisoners today is solitary confinement. Yeah, that's to true. To keep them away from other people. Why is that a horrible punishment? Because people still want to connect. People still need other people. Uh, Popular media uh, cultural reference, Tom Hanks in the movie Castaway. (laughs) Wilson. Wilson the volleyball. (laughs) And what happened when the, uh, you know, spoiler spoiler alert, you know, the volleyball got lost and and died. And and there was a sense of loss. Look, people need people, but not to the point of survival. That's the difference between survival and survival. And being able to thrive in life, yeah. and I think, and and uh, you know, good relationship, you it it brings out the best in you, and you know, you can share the best of you as exactly. well. Exactly, Frank. We've come to another end of another program together. Thirty dating dilemmas thus far. Hey, awesome. Well, thirty-one next month. Thank you very much for joining me. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best-selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at franktalks.com. Coaching available in person, by phone, and by Skype. For singles, couples, and alternative lifestyles, franktalks.com. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationships? Visit Frank Dogs.